Hi, my name's Sneep Out. I'm the GM at Crazy Egg. I was asked to spend a couple of minutes walking you through what I would do in my normal day to day when I take a look at different pages on our website uh, and try to figure out what's working, what's not, and if we have any missed opportunities. As the GM, I don't spend a tremendous amount of time on this, maybe 20 to 30 minutes a week, uh, because we also have an amazing team that, that spends a lot of time on it. What I want to be able to do is learn a little bit, give them some guidance, give them some feedback, and have that incorporate that into their decision making. One of the things I was asked to look at was our homepage. So let's dive into it. If you look at this homepage, what you'll see is this is one of the ones that we've had a lot of success with for quite some time. Uh, it's working well, lots of clicks, lots of you know, key engagement with our uh, call to action. But there were a couple of things we learned. One, a lot of wasted clicks on Crazy Egg up here in the upper left. Uh, that link doesn't go anywhere. Uh, and so people are clicking there, perhaps lost, perhaps looking for help or looking for an alternative. Um, and it's something that we're missing. Uh, a lot of potentially wasted space here in the middle. We've given folks a lot of space to consume our message. It took us quite a bit of time to, to get to a message that wasn't uh, driving up bounce rates. Uh, we feel good about it, but there's still some opportunity here. Uh, and then when you scroll down, how are we getting people to engage with our content and potentially learn a little bit more about our content? Some things that we wanna make sure we don't screw up are, you know, one of the most important things for me is do you align the call to action with maximum attention? And we've done a pretty good job here. Just below our call to action is where people are paying most attention. And that's something that we want to keep in mind. Um, in addition, we have a clear drop off here because we used to have folks click to expand. Uh, but this is interesting because it's kind of a bleed approach. So we don't know if people are doing this merely to continue reading here or to follow through and read uh, the rest of the page. The last thing I look at is where are people clicking and where are they coming from and what is their behavior like? And this is a controlled experiment, uh, you know, limited number of clicks uh, for a reason, so we could isolate any variable. Um, but you know, whether they came from new versus returning, refer a search engine, country, device type, et cetera, uh, one of the things that we controlled for was to make sure that the experience was effectively the same, regardless of where you came from. So we didn't drive any paid traffic to this specific experiment while it was running. So with that in mind, let's look at one of the variants we came up with. We created this alternative. Uh, we looked at this, you know, redesigned a page. This was something that I you know, was really excited about, featuring the product, pulling it above the fold, and at the end of the day, it just didn't perform. Uh, you can see a couple things. We didn't diffuse the clicks from the crazy egg in the upper left. Um, the assumption was that by compressing this content, to moving up the call to action, we may get more engagement there. It actually seems like we may have just created too much noise and distracted the user. It seems like our users may want more space as they get familiar with us. Um, and you know, we learned a lot more by clicking on recordings as well. Uh, but it's interesting to, to fill in the gaps that you get from heat maps with recordings uh, to sort of you know, tell you what happens between, between events. And if you look at scroll map, one of the things that we messed up is 83% of attention is now about our call to action. Peak attention is right about here. Uh, and it's dead space. It's below the product. It's below, it's just a hill. Uh, and we sort of missed the boat, uh, missed the boat on that greatly. So back to the drawing board. We launched a new version of our homepage on Friday, just a few days ago. How are we doing? Um, hasn't been that long, but you'll see some of the things are starting to bear fruit. Reintroduce some space. Uh, we gave Crazy Egg some prominence, but I think by pulling space down and creating more space, we, we basically diffuse some of the clicks from the upper left. Um, there's still some rogue clicks there, something that we wanna work on, but a lot of our call to actions and attention are here. There's still people logging in, um, really fascinating. So where's, where are people spending their time? Where are people focusing their attention? One thing I'm really happy with is we nailed it. We had 100% uh, of attention right in alignment with our call to action, uh, and we actually put chat uh, so it fits right in that sweet spot as well really trying to capitalize on this attention of users. The other thing we did was we drew a straight line and said anything below a particular threshold, we want people to click to engage with. It becomes active, it means they've committed, they've opted in, and you'll see it's a very clear line, but what's fascinating for me is all the way through, doesn't matter how far you go, about one in 10 people to one in nine people are paying attention. Those people that click here want to be here, what that tells me is it gives me the opportunity to create richer content to engage them here. Is that video? Is that some animation? Is that deeper content? But we have this attention. 
Um, and that, that means we have the ability to really capitalize on this crew uh, and this audience. So a couple of the takeaways, uh, again, just in a couple of minutes of spending time with Crazy Egg and with our homepage, some of the things that I wanna see done, I'm gonna to talk to the team about are, how do we capitalize on this intent? People may be lost or looking for a way out or looking for an alternative. Can we use that to pop, help scout, or drift as a way to get into a conversation with our customers and see where we may be able to help them? Talked a little bit about it, richer content below the fold. And one thing I'm really excited about is I know the team is working hard on case studies so that these become active and springboards into deeper research for our customers. That's what we've learned. That's what I'm really excited to share. And we keep iterating, but hopefully you can see in a few short minutes uh, how quickly we could learn and gain insight into some of the biggest opportunities we can use to continue to iteratively make our experiences better for our customers. Thanks.